Hey friends, Daniel here with the Leap Ages Tech Team bringing you today's tech tip. Zapier is a free application that allows you to connect and send data between thousands of different applications. Automated connections called Zaps, set up in minutes with no coding, can automate your day-to-day -day tasks and build workflows between applications that otherwise wouldn't be possible. Each Zap has one application as the trigger, which acts as an information source and causes one or more actions in other applications where your data gets sent automatically. You can now use Lead Pages as a trigger for any Zap to send those new leads to other services. During this tech tip, we'll dive into the Zap creation process. As we go through creating a Zap today, there are a few details I wanted to cover first. You will need a Zapier account. If you don't have one already, you can create one at the same time that you create your first Zap from within Lead Pages. Lead Pages will be able to send data from text fields to your action application. Check boxes, radio buttons, drop down fields, and other custom fields will not pass data through Zapier to your action application. Zapier will connect to drag and drop builder forms. It will not connect to standard builder forms, opt in text, trigger links, or forms embedded using our HTML widget. You must have one other integration connected in the form to use the Zapier integration. Now that we've gone over those fine details, let's dive into the creation process. In this case, you can see that I do have a landing page already pulled up for my lawn care service. And what I'd like to do is send opt-in information collected to the Google Sheet that my team can review at any point in time. So let's go ahead and go into my call to action button where I have a pop-up connected. And on my pop-up, I do have our form widget. So I'll go ahead and click on edit integrations. Now, as we go through the Zap creation process, one thing that's going to be important during this is the name of our form. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this lawn care. This is going to be what is selected within the Zap. So if you are creating a Zap within Zapier system directly, you're gonna actually select this form name. Now, as we go through a pre-designed Zap, that name will automatically be selected for us. What I wanna make sure to do is I wanna set the integrations that I want and the fields that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove first name for now. I just wanna collect email address. And I wanna make sure that I have everything set up as I want, save and close, and I do need to publish the page first. And the reason being is I do need to submit a test opt-in, which is going to be used during the Zap creation process. So once this page publishes, let's go ahead and visit the live URL and submit a test opt-in. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the live URL here, and I'm going to submit my information as a test. Now that I've submitted that test, I'm going to go ahead and head back into the Lead Pages Builder, close out of the publishing modal, and jump back into edit integrations. Now before we dive into creating the Zap any further, what I do need to make sure that I have done is I need to make sure that I have my Google Sheet set up. So right now I'm looking for email address. I'm gonna pop over to my Google Sheet that I already have created. I've called it Lawn Care and Client List, and I'm going to add in the heading email. And I'll just click out to save that. And I'll jump back now into the Lead Pages Builder, click on Add an Integration, More Services, and scroll down to where we see integrations powered by Zapier. Now we're gonna see several pre-designed Zaps here. If the service that you're using is not a pre-designed Zap that you see listed here, that's okay. You still are able to create a Zap if that application is available within Zapier system. You're just gonna head into Zapier itself to do so. In this case, I'm gonna be using Google Sheets and there is a pre-designed Zap here, so I'm going to use that and use this Zap. Now, as we go through, we're gonna see the Zapier modal pop up here, and we're just gonna go through step-by-step -step of the Zap creation process. So first is, choose app and events, so choose account. So I need to choose my Lead Pages account. I've already connected Lead Pages and Zapier together, but if you hadn't done that already, you may be asked to do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my account now and continue. Now from this point, I want to customize my form submission, and this is where that form name is really important, right? It says Lawn Care, do not change this. It's already pre-selected for me. If I'm creating that Zap and Zapier system though, I do need to make sure to select Lawn Care. Now from this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue. And from here, I'm going to test and continue. So I've already connected Google Sheets within Zapier, but if you hadn't done that already, of course you'd be asked to do so. So I'm going to Google Sheets and create a new spreadsheet row. 
I'll continue through this. I'm going to select my Google Sheets account, which I mentioned I already connected, and then go ahead and continue. From this point, what I'm going to do is select my spreadsheet, which is going to be Lawn Care. And from here, what I'm going to do is select my worksheet, which is going to be Client List. Now from this point, I see my field pull up. I do need to select my field and my test opt-in. From that point, I do need to continue. And from here, we're going to be asked to test and continue. And we see our list, our information here. So we'll test and continue. Now, now once we've done that, we want to make sure to turn our zap to the on position. Once that zap has been turned on, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the Zapier modal here. Close out of our integrations modal. I'm going to go through the field setup and save and update. And I'm going to test opting in again, making sure that my information gets to that Google Sheet once this page has been updated. So let's go ahead and view my page again. I'm going to use a different email address this time, just so we know and can see that. I'll use a test one on this and sign up. Now let's head into Google Sheets where we see both my test submission from when I created the Zap is there, along with that test that I just did. So let's head back into the Lead Pages Builder. Let's say at a later point in time, I've decided I do want to collect their first name. I want to personalize things just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and add in a field under two fields, add a field, first name, and enter that into my form so people can fill it out. Now I do need to make sure to go through and save and close, update my page again, and submit an opt-in now with the new information that I'm requesting. I also need to make sure that on my Google Sheet, I do add in a first name heading. So let's head back into Lead Pages. I'm going to go ahead and view my page, and I'm going to submit my information again. I'll use my plus test, and I'll do two this time, and my first name, and sign up. Now that I've done that, let's head back into Lead Pages, into our form, where we can go ahead and edit that zap. Now I can also head into Zapier itself to edit the zap, just so you're aware of that. Um, but I can do that right here within the Pages Builder also. So I'm going to go ahead and go through each of the steps. I'll edit and go choose application. That looks good. Choose account. So I'm going to choose account. That looks good. Customize form submission. I'm going to refresh my fields and find data. And I'm going to just pull in a sample, making sure I have a recent sample, selecting that and having it update. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue on down. So let's go ahead and go down to uh, my, being that I'm done with this, so I'm gonna just make sure that I have everything set as I want uh, in my zap, that I've continued through everything and I'm done editing. And then I wanna go ahead and edit the action application as well too. So let's go through, choose the app. Everything looks good there. Choose account, everything looks good there. Customize spreadsheet row. I wanna go ahead and refresh my fields. That way I have first name pull through and I can select my name. And then from this point, we wanna go ahead and continue. Now that that was set, let's go ahead and retest and continue. So test two and get that going through. Now I'm gonna go ahead and again, uh, make sure that my zap is turned on. And from this point, once that zap turns on, I'm going to just go ahead and go through in lead pages, next fields, next actions, save and close, and then go ahead and update. Again, from this point, let's just send in a test submission to make sure that that opt-in information does pass through to my Google Sheet. So let's go ahead and view page, and I'm going to submit my information again once more, and I'll use test three this time. And I'm just gonna say support, just so we know it's a, a different name. And I'll submit that. Let's jump over to our Google Sheet now and make sure that that information did appear. So we do see it there. Now, jumping back into the Lead Pages Builder, one last thing I just wanted to make sure to mention is at any point in time, if you decide that you would no longer like to use the Zap to send information to another application, you can remove that Zap. In order to do so, there are two options. Number one would be to duplicate the form using this duplicate option here. The duplicate will appear on the right, the original on the left. And I can go ahead and delete my original. 
The other option would be to completely just delete the form widget and start with a fresh one bringing it over from the widgets menu here and dragging it, dropping it onto our screen. And as you can see, it does show me that my zap has been turned off. I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me for this tech tip. And don't forget, if you have any questions, our knowledge base and support team are just a click away under the question mark within your lead pages account.